after a super kind of Sunday out there, we are tracking a wintry system to get in here for tomorrow. Winter weather advisory kicks in Monday evening. We will track it coming up. It's been an emotional week after a massive fire destroyed bluegrass stockyards and several surrounding businesses. It's a big night for TV. When Super Bowl 50 50 kicks off, it'll bring with it plenty of excitement and pressure. Basically, these large sporting events are a stress test. Why doctors say the game can be hazardous to some fans' health. WKYT News starts now with first alert weather. Get ready to welcome winter back. You're watching WKYT on the CW Lexington. We've seen some great weather across the bluegrass today, but some big changes are moving in. WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking snow in the work week. How about snow for the entire work week? Because that's what it looks like we're going to be tracking across the area. A daily chance of snow works its way into Kentucky starting with tomorrow. Now, late tonight, it will begin as a little bit of rain. And then we'll get into tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, and the winter weather advisory picks up. And that will carry us all the way through the duration of the evening hours and into your Tuesday as well. So you see the counties highlighted. Let's throw some temperatures on there. Hard to think about a winter weather advisory when you're looking at this. 48 in Richmond, 47 in Lexington. How about uh, 53 out toward Louisville and 50 in uh, Prestonsburg right now? A lot of warmth still with us, so we're going to have to cool things down. Here's our hour by hour radar, and what you're seeing here is just the rain. The rain initially gets here. And you're looking at 10, 11 o'clock. This is high resolution, by the way, and we first break out into plain old rain showers. But as we progress a little bit later on in this with our hour by hour look, you notice that the snow starts. Starts to mix in and those temperatures tank as we get into the day tomorrow, and that's when our winter weather advisory begins. We will track it a little more in detail and show you some of the updated snowfall totals from uh, some of the models coming up in just a few minutes. One week has passed since a massive fire tore down the bluegrass stockyards and damaged half a dozen surrounding businesses. Management at the stockyards worked fast to find alternate locations for sales, and tonight, for the first time this week, the COO is talking about what he's uncovered in the ashes. And how he's moving forward. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner has our top story at six. It's been a busy week at Bluegrass Stockyards. Crews have been busy cleaning up what's left. It's been an emotional week for owners, workers, and families that have spent so much time here. Friday, an amazing discovery was made underground. Last Saturday's massive fire destroyed most all of Bluegrass Stockyards and several surrounding businesses. The stockyards meant a lot of things to a lot of people. We're told cars full of families have pulled onto the grounds just to stand and look at what's left. Grieving has been a part of the cleanup process and worrying too. Worry that pieces of history were lost. All the offices for the stockyards were underground beneath very thick concrete. Below all that concrete, stockyard officials found their offices full of historical pieces and items very important to them, like hand drawings of the stockyard plans. It was just what they needed moving forward. You know, we're already talking about what we're going to do with those things in our new facility to pay homage to the history of this place. And it's, it's I guess it's been one of the brighter, <laughs> more fun conversations. Everybody's really excited about that. And uh, it's neat. Bluegrass Stockyards has plans to meet this week and decide what's happening going forward. In Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. They still don't know where or when they'll rebuild. New tonight, a Hardin County man is in jail accused of trying to kill a state trooper. State police went to a home on Wonderland Cavern land to interview 22 year old Dustin Thomas about a burglary investigation. They say no one was inside the home, but when a trooper was walking back to his car, someone shot at him. The trooper was not hurt. They arrested Thomas after a standoff. He is charged with attempted murder of a police officer. If you're not careful, Super Bowl Sunday can bring with it a visit to the emergency room. Doctors say tonight is a busy one for ERs. WKYT's Sean Moody talked to one emergency physician about the pressure the game can put on the heart. Dr. Ryan Stanton says events like the Super Bowl can trigger busy nights in the emergency room. It's basically, these large sporting events are a stress test. And he says some people can handle that pressure. So if you have risk factors for a heart attack or a stroke, 
it can actually trigger those um, by pushing you over the edge. Especially in a close game when your hometown team is playing. Um, one study showed that the home team with a really close Super Bowl, the losing team has an increased risk of heart attack by 22% for two weeks afterwards. Now areas like this, we may not see those numbers, but we are gonna, there are some diehard fans here. And so we will see some potential risk increase associated with those. And Stanton says big events bring another complication, people ignoring symptoms because they're just too into the game. That people will delay, even when I've worked events, people saying I'm not leaving, even with chest pain or some early stroke-like symptoms because they don't want to lose the ticket or how much they've invested in it or sitting on the couch not wanting to miss the end of the game. So we see that with big events, we see it with holidays, we see it with any type of things that distracts you from your health. Stanton says another risk factor to consider is being out on the roads after a big game like this. We will start to see people in the emergency room, which is the after party, basically, where one, alcohol intoxication coming an issue, substance abuse, um, fights, things like that. But big, a big one, of course, is the driving afterwards. Stanton hopes to see people make good decisions during and after the game. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. Stan says despite popular belief, eating a lot of junk food during the game doesn't contribute to heart attacks later that night. Liquor stores see an increase in sales on Super Bowl Sunday. And with that increase, state police say there's a higher chance you'll see a drunk driver out on the roads tonight. Officers are reminding people if you plan on drinking, make sure you have a designated driver. It's a whole lot better for you to have a designated driver to drive you home than for an officer to drive you to jail in the back of their car. Sheriff's offices plan to have extra officers on patrol tonight looking for drunk drivers. Super Bowl Sunday is also the biggest day of the year for many restaurants. The big game means big business for places selling chicken wings. WKYT's Mike Linden stopped by one to see how busy they've been this Super Bowl Sunday. At Indy's fast food food in Lexington, they're serving up fried chicken, ribs, and fish all day long. And to me, I call it holiday food because everything's on the holiday table. We got it right here for you. While today isn't an official holiday, it's by no means a normal Sunday at Indy's. And the other Sunday, just a normal Sunday. But this is just a huge event today. It's just a Super Bowl. Chase says his staff will go through more than 50,000 chicken wings today, more than five times more than on a normal Sunday. Chase says on a normal day here at Indy's, they'll fill up these bins all day long with chicken wings. But today, their busiest day of the year, they fill up this larger black bin all day long, which fits about three times more wings than the normal bins. Indies opened up an hour early today just to get the fryers going. Employees say the closer it gets to game time, the busier it gets. So you try to get ahead of the game, but sometimes we'll be trying to stay to catch up. Like today, there's going to be a lot of catch up. It's the Super Bowl. As to who Watkins is rooting for in the big game, it's Cam, Cam Newton, he's that man. He's going to hit that dab on him. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. The National Chicken Council reports Americans will eat one and a quarter billion wings today. That's up nearly 38 million from last year. And remember, you can watch the Super Bowl over on WKYT. Kickoff is at 630. The story of a Southern Kentucky football legend has become somewhat of a motivation for one of the teams playing in tonight's Super Bowl. Travis Freeman lost his sight when he was 12 years old. Being blind didn't stop him from playing football. WKYT's Hillary Thornton tells us how Freeman's story has inspired the Carolina Panthers. Sporting their favorite team colors, enthusiasm filled the room on Super Bowl Sunday. Joining the dozens, a hometown football legend wearing a Carolina Panthers jersey. We're proud of Travis here in Corbin. An important piece of Corbin High School's football history, not necessarily for games he won, but for the obstacles Travis Freeman tackled while in the Red Hounds uniform. I lost my sight at the age of 12 uh, due to a severe sinus infection. And one year later, I stepped onto the football field as America's first blind football player. Bringing his story of overcoming adversity. I went from perfect 2020 vision to no vision at all. A fitting day for Freeman to share his message here inside of Parkway Ministries as it is a day all about the sport that plays a big role in his story. It's really given me a, a platform to um, challenge and inspire people and, and so it's, uh, it's really in my blood.
A game taking center stage today. It is a game helping Freeman's inspiring story connect with others, including one of the teams playing in Super Bowl 50. Panthers uh, invited me and my parents to come down. I did the uh, keep pounding ceremony for them that they do uh, right before every home game. Today I'm definitely pulling for uh, the Panthers. In Corbin, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. And that Panthers jersey he was wearing in the story, the team gave it to him after the release of his movie 23 Blast.